Now that I've got my Config Manager 2503 environment all installed and it has a boundary group, we're now ready to get my distribution point all up and running. A distribution point is a role that a site server has if it's responsible for, you guessed it, distributing content to clients. This could be during device provisioning or when the device is in production. You can have many distribution points, but in this small lab, we're only going to have one and I'm going to set that up just now with you. Here's how we do it. So heading down in the console to distribution points, you see I've got a distribution point already, mainly because it is put there automatically when you build a site server. This is the primary site server here. So I already have a distribution point. Let's take a look at what it looks like. Right click and choose properties and a lot of tabs, a lot of options here. Firstly, we should give it a description. I mean, in a lab, maybe you don't need to, but ideally in a production environment, you would give it some kind of description. We get to specify whether we enable branch cache, we use leadbat, uh, whether it can use pre-stage content or even act as a Microsoft connected cache server. For the majority of labs, we, we aren't gonna need any of these options selected. We move over to the communications tab. For most environments, you should be okay with just choosing eHttp or HTTPS and not selecting allow clients to connect anonymously. And we'll go into more of that later on as we go through how to use Config Manager. Moving over to the PXE tab. Now, PXE stands for Preboot Execution Environment. You should know that, you probably do know that if you've been using Config Manager for a while. So Pixie is how we refer to it. And Pixie is a way of booting a computer from bare metal or no operating system, so pre-boot, into a, an operating system deployment state. And so we might want to allow Pixie support for clients. So if we choose that, you can see it says we need to uh, look at our firewall because we need to specify some ports that actually are able to communicate to the site server from the client. And if we choose yes, then we it assumes that we've done that. It doesn't do it for us. It actually goes ahead and just assumes we've done the things that it suggested. So you may need to go back and actually do the things that it said by going into the firewall and, and, and allowing those ports. Now, a really important one is allow this distribution point to respond to incoming Pixie requests. You're kind of going to need that. That's going to allow it to actually show up as a server and respond when a client looks for a Pixie server in the environment. Also, if you're not pre-importing your computers into Config Manager, then they're going to be unknown to Config Manager. So you're going to need to enable unknown computer support. And it says if you enable unknown computer support, any unknown computers that use Pixie can attempt to run task sequences. Just be aware of that. If you have required task sequences that just start when a computer starts a Pixie request, then that's something you need to really consider. But we're going to go into all of the OSD stuff later on. I'll choose OK. And it says we can enable a Pixie responder without the Windows deployment service enabled. If I choose that, it says this option enables a Pixie responder on this distribution point without requiring WDS. Now the only difference between WDS and uh, non-WDS is that WDS can use multicast. There's surely more differences, but really the main difference that you're gonna care about is that you can't use multicast. So the transfer of data will be point to point rather than point to multipoint. Um, it might matter to you depending on the number of clients you're building, probably won't for most organizations, certainly these days. So we can assume that it's okay to enable a Pixie responder without WDS. And it says disabling this Pixie responder enables WDS. So are you sure you want to enable the Pixie responder without WDS? Yes, I am. That's pretty much what I am. And then enable preferred management point for Pixie requests. Now, this is really about giving the client a clue of where to start looking for its, uh, its management point when it first gets a connection to the network. And so if we choose this, you can see I've only got one option, but if you don't select this, then it's simply not gonna have that clue of where to look for the management point. And you're gonna rely on other methods of site discovery. Now a Pixie password, that's something commonly understood by engineers who are building devices 
do you need to type a password uh, like not a, not a preboot pin but a uh, a password when the device starts the operating system deployment process and so this could be something simple like boot me it's quite a common one b double o t m e something really simple to get devices ready to build but if this environment is kind of a closed environment and it's it's in your office and or even just in your lab but in your office then it's unlikely that an attacker is going to try and build a device from this environment it's possible but unlikely the main problem you might have is that users might accidentally boot a device into the pixie environment and in that case you want to make sure they can't accidentally start deploying the operating system and that's where a pixie password is really useful and so a simple password like boot me is really useful just because it's very easy to explain to engineers and a user is not going to be able to guess boot me so next we have user device affinity do we want to allow user device affinity at all and if we do is it going to be automatic or manual approval we're going to talk about user device affinity later on if we get time but i think for now in a lab environment it's really not needed at all and then respond to pixie on which network interfaces so i'm going to go with all because i've only got really one in this environment actually so it's going to be that network interface that replies but if you have a server environment with lots of different interfaces that are connected to this particular computer you might want to specify exactly which one and then also we've got the ability to specify a delay now this might be needed if you want to prevent this the, the server responding too quickly because other things need to take place before it can respond so you may want to add a small delay in there if needed but by default leave it at zero and it'll probably work fine if it doesn't work then you may need to add that delay let's go to multicast now in this case we are enabling pixie without wds so we can't use multiple multicast to send data to multiple clients simultaneously so we'll leave that to off group relationships i don't have a distribution point group in this environment yet and if i was just use add it doesn't let me create one so i would need to just leave this as empty for now and we'll look at that later on when we go into the content tab you can see i've got a few bits of content already distributed to this distribution point some testing i was doing earlier on but we hadn't configured it until just now so it wasn't going anywhere content validation we can specify that we will recheck the content to see whether it's exactly the same uh, integrity that it was when we put it there originally and you can do content validation on a regular basis if you like I would I'd probably say once a month uh, to make sure that it just runs and make sure that the content is definitely in the right place and has the right integrity now on a boundary group I've already added this site system this distribution point to this main lab boundary group so that's exactly why that is there we have the option for on-demand distribution and that's where if you push a piece of software to this boundary group or to devices in this boundary group it will automatically push the content to this distribution point i'm not going to enable that just yet because actually i think it's unnecessary because we're going to distribute the content as we start pushing applications so i'll choose ok and now we've pretty much got our distribution point all in place right that's all done. With the DP in place, we can now move on to the fun stuff. See you next time.